Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> I'm going to do the best I can this time to, uh, to really give you the picture. Praise God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Of what's getting ready to take place and why the servants of God uh, should not be in fear. The true servants of God won't be. <clears throat> they know that perfect love casts out all fear. So the idea that they are in any way fearful of how the end comes about or whether or not we go through a tribulation period under a covering, Noah's Ark, uh, to the servants of God, it's an opportunity to serve and be obedient to His will and the leading of His Holy Spirit, which separates the wheat from the tares. Come on. Amen, Jesus. Now, I've heard every theory under the sun about what they believe to take place except for, and I've said this before, what Jesus, the Messiah, our Lord and Savior, what He said would take place. That's the only working theory that you need to have. But you need to have a good understanding of it or you're not going to be able to be prepared to enter into it when it takes place. Now he said this end would come as in the day of Jonah or Noah, Jonah and Lot. That's how the day comes. Now spiritually speaking, you've got to look at that in the types of those days. Now Noah came and prepared an ark, a place of safety. Away from what? The flood that was coming. Destruction. Uh. Yeah, they're all given in marriage and everything else, but everybody denies and ignores the fact that the day of Jonah had more to do with the building of the ark than it had to do with what the people were doing in the world. or in this worldly church. Uh, <clears throat> the Father told us that the harlot would receive a double portion of judgment. He also said that he would lift up her skirts her skirt to expose her nakedness. Now, come on. When you lift something up and you expose something, what are you doing? You're uncovering, taking off the mask or the sheep's clothing that clothes the wolves so everybody gets to be seen for who they really are. That's exposing, okay, the scripture says. It says, not to expose the nakedness of your brother. Well, what is he referring to when he makes that statement? Not to reveal the true nature or character of your brother when you've been told something about a sin, okay, in your brother's life, amen, Jesus, because he or she has come to you, brother or sister, has come to you and exposed themselves to you, the truth of who they are and what they went through, okay? And repented of, amen, Jesus. That you're not supposed to expose that to anybody else. You're supposed to keep it. You're supposed to be a covering, okay, for him. Because he trusted you. Or she trusted you. So, what's the father do? He exposes, uncovers, the nakedness of the whore. This is what causes the commotion in the marketplace. It's the eyes, okay, the awakening and the commotion 
that awakens the bridesmaids or virgins. Look at them any way you want to. So then what happens? Well, he sends forth the angels to the four corners of the earth. And I've told you before, angels are known as messengers. They don't have to be angelic beings. They can be messengers. Well, I wonder who the messengers are who are as angels with wings who are sent forth throughout the entire world. What's that like? Isn't that like the saviors, plural, more than one? As Jesus said, he was only the first of many sons and daughters that would come. And then we come down, they come down from Mount Zion, the holy mountain of the Father, with what? Healing, deliverance. Look up these words. Healing, deliverance. It's all a matter of the covering, the ark, the entering into. And they come down from Mount Zion with healing in their what? Wings. <laughs> the angels, the messengers, are sent throughout the world of which the Father has shared with us the workmen of the eleventh hour. The angels that are sent forth. The messengers. The sons and daughters of God. Which the birth pangs we've been going through with the increase of natural disasters are nothing more than the birth pangs of what? The anointing, heavenly Jerusalem coming down with the child in her arms. The man-child company. These are all the events and that are getting ready to take place right now. As Jesus said, Noah, the ark, the gathering of the flock, the last flock, the omega flock. Now what? Well, it's as the day of Jonah. So what? What did Jonah do? Well, he was three days in the valley's well, which was likened down to the Lord's three days in the, in the earth. And on the third day, he was spit up on the sea of what? Nineveh. And what's Nineveh a picture of? A worldly city. And what is the church? The false church. What is it likened on to? A worldly city. Goes up in smoke. Is there a symbolic representation? Yeah, I believe Rome and the Catholic Church is a symbolic representation, but it's not the true whore and harlot. She's spiritual. That's why she can't be held back by doctrines and traditions or I don't care if you're Presbyterian, Lutheran, or what you are. Amen? That religious spirit is able to go right through any walls. It's a spirit. So what's Jonah do? Well, first of all, he's sent a God. Okay? And what is it he don't want to do? Well, he don't want to warn the worldly church. Well, I wonder why. Well, pray for your enemies. Love your enemies. Don't even like doing that. He don't want to have to do that. But he did. Just like the sons and daughters. I don't think they really want to do it. But they're going to do it. Because it's the will of the Father. It's our responsibility to warn them of what's getting ready to take place. Now you folks don't have much more time to make up your minds about what's being said to you here on this channel regarding the end time. 